On November 17, 2010, AIDS.gov attended the 2010 National Summit on HIV Diagnosis, Prevention, and Access to Care in National Harbor, Maryland. We spoke with two leading HIV experts who shared highlights from their presentations at the opening plenary. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kevin Fenton, Director of CDC's National Center for HIV AIDS, Viral Hepatitis, STD, and TB Prevention in Atlanta. I'm Dr. Kimberly Smith, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Section of Infectious Diseases at Rush University Medical Center. Well, I had an opportunity to do one of the opening plenary talks this evening, and I really represented and spoke about the numbers, what's happening with the epidemiology of HIV AIDS in the United States. And in my talk today, I really reflected on, I think, four key points. The first being that we're seeing a very dynamic evolution of the HIV AIDS epidemic in the United States. The epidemic today is very different to the one that we had 10 years ago and will continue to change. I also reflected on the increasing concentration of the epidemic among gay and bisexual men of all races, among African Americans, Hispanic and Latinos, and some geographic sites across the country which really have hyperendemic levels of HIV, um, which rival areas in sub-Saharan Africa. I also spoke about the fact that we have seen some prevention successes, declining rates of deaths from HIV AIDS, um, increases in HIV testing, stabilization in HIV uh, in some population subgroups. And then I ended by just reflecting on what we need to do more, uh, both in terms of scaling up the HIV testing, but also ensuring that we really maximize the use of the national HIV AIDS strategy to focus our efforts, to mobilize communities, and to inspire uh, so many people across the country to do more for HIV AIDS. Uh, my uh, opportunity today was sort of to get inside the numbers that Kevin presented, and particularly I focused on the African American community and sort of why the numbers are what they are and how they've gotten to be what they are. And so I, I really talked a lot about the fact that the prevalence in the African American community has gotten to be at a really high level, so much so that um, individuals don't need to engage in what we have traditionally thought of as high risk behaviors in order to be at risk for HIV. Many of the people that are infected by HIV now are engaging in what we would typically call normative heterosexual activities, but are at risk because there's such a high prevalence in the population and the likelihood of them coming across someone who's HIV infected if they're uh, in the African American community is much higher than it is in other communities. And so I, I talked about the fact that that is the case and that part of our challenge is that sort of we don't, the, the community doesn't recognize that that's the case. And so we don't recognize that there's as much risk out there as there is. Dr. Fenton also shared his thoughts on how the HIV epidemic is specifically affecting young men who have sex with men, or MSM, of color. I, I, there are so many aspects of your presentation that I think really dovetail nicely with the picture that I painted of the different epidemic that we have today. Absolutely. I also reflected on what's happening in young gay men in the United States and the fact that we really are in the midst of a crisis in HIV among young gay and bisexual men, especially young men as MSM of color. And really what the data are showing is that the incidence rates within these groups are both high and there's a disproportionate burden of new infections among young gay men. And I think the data you showed, Kim, really suggested that among young gay men, the risk behaviors are not necessarily higher than their white counterparts. And we need to think not only of the individual level risks, but the, the sexual and social networks within which these men find themselves, the patterns of sexual mixing that occur in the, in the population, and of course the background prevalence of disease, the fact that um, these young gay men are having sex within an environment with high background prevalence of HIV. So with any given risk of sexual behavior, they're more likely to acquire HIV than their white counterparts. So again, bringing this back to the National HIV AIDS strategy, I think you're absolutely correct. The strategy really calls us towards a vision of a future in which HIV infections become rare. But it also challenges us to target the scarce resources we have to areas where the epidemic is evolving. To learn more information, visit www.cdc.gov forward slash HIV and www.hivforum.org.